Hey GED students, it's question of the daytime and I really wanted to work this actually simple one step equation. Not because you'll actually see this, you probably won't see a problem just like this in your GED, but you will see a problem where this comes up. This exact step is that I'm gonna take is often the last step when solving what's called the Pythagorean theorem. So I just wanna look at this um, a fact on its own before we look at it in the bigger context. So let's take a look. It says solve the equation for M. And I would remind you that when someone asks me to solve for a letter, they're asking me to get that particular letter alone to isolate that variable. So they're asking me to get the letter alone. Right now that letter is almost alone on its side of the equal sign, uh, but I can see that there's something happening to this M. This M is currently being squared. So it's not totally alone. There's this operation working on it. So M squared is equal to 57. But I don't want to know what M squared is equal to. I want to know what M alone is equal to. I'm trying to solve the mystery of M, okay? And so the rule is to isolate a variable, what you're going to do is you're going to perform the inverse operation. You'll do the opposite of squaring. You will uh, do the inverse or the opposite of squaring. So now a lot of students know the inverses of the basic operations. They're like, okay, the inverse of add is subtract. The inverse of multiply is divide. I meet very few students who struggle with that concept, but then a lot of students get stumped. They say, well, what's the in inverse of squaring? Is there even an inverse of squaring? Can you go backwards? And you sure can. The inverse or opposite of squaring is taking the square root, taking the square root, okay? And so if I want to get rid of a square, what I'm gonna have to do is I'm gonna have to take the square root of the entire left-hand side of the equation. Okay, now guys, if I am going to make a change. No one told me to square root. I decided I was going to square root this problem. There was no square root on the problem originally. And you know, that's totally legit in an equation. You can do that. You are allowed to do whatever you want as long as you do it to both sides of the equation. So I'm going to hop the equal sign and I am going to balance my change. If I take the square root of the left hand side, I have to take the square root of the right hand side to verify that both sides are going to be equal. Okay, so on the left hand side, square and square root cancel, leaving me with M. And on the right hand side, this is why I wanted to do this problem. This will come up for you oftentimes in word problems on the GED. I don't know the square root of 57. I don't know the square root of 57 because 57 isn't a perfect square. It's not one of the ones I have memorized. You know, I know six times six is 36. So six squared is 36. I know seven squared, seven times seven is 49. I know eight squared, eight times eight is 64. Yet I went right past this number 57 as I rattled off my perfect squares in order. You know, I don't know the perfect square for 57. And this is when you are really going to like your TI-30 access calculator. Because the math to try to figure this out by hand is horrific. It's a guess and check method that could take you dozens of guesses and checks. And I just don't care to do it. And so what I'm going to do instead is I am going to use my TI-30 excess calculator to simplify the right-hand side. Okay, in order to type this expression, the square root of 57 into your TI, you are first going to have to um, type the second button. Let me tell you why. Uh, the square, it's because the square root symbol is written in green. In fact, let's turn that green. Oh my goodness. Because I, I don't have the, like if I was like really technologically savvy, I bet I would have for you a, um, a picture of the TI and I would do this on the TI, but I'm not that cool, okay guys? So I don't have a TI on my screen, so you're gonna have to believe me. So the square root is written in green above the X squared button on your calculator. And that's because squaring and square root are opposites. So that's why they're on the same button there. Uh, but anytime you want something in green, you have to hit second first. So you're gonna hit second and then the X squared button and that'll pop up a square root on your um, screen. And then you can type in 57 and enter. Now, an interesting thing's going to happen because you could get in the very same calculator two different answers, two different answers to this problem, and you better know what to do. So some of you just did that, square root of 57 in your TI-30 excess calculator, and the calculator told you that is equal to the square root of 57. 
And you're going, how helpful was that? Not helpful at all, especially because I read this language up here that says round your answer to the nearest tenth. You hear that decimal language? They're asking us to round a decimal and my calculator didn't even give me a decimal. That means you're in the wrong mode for this problem. And this is exactly why I wanted to work this with you. A lot of you guys do not know how to flip the modes in your TI-30XS and you will need to flip the modes oftentimes mid test. So to do that, if you got this answer out of your calculator, you need to change the mode. So press mode arrow down to the line. There's a line where there's two modes, classic and math print. Classic works like an old fashioned calculator. It gives you decimal style answers. Math print will do as much math as it can do without having to round a decimal. So math print will just simplify without approximating. Classic mode though will give you that decimal approximation. So go ahead and flip your calculator back to into classic mode by arrowing over it and pressing enter. So arrow over the word classic and then press enter. Now that you're sure you're in classic mode, you can press a clear, that'll get you out of that screen. And now let's try square root of 57 again. So we still find square root of 57 the same way you're going to press the second button and then the x squared button so that you can get that square root symbol that's in green then press 57 and enter and now you should get a decimal answer and i totally should have had my calculator out while i did that and i didn't so y'all get to watch me stumble the square root of 57. so you get this long nasty decimal 7.54 da 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 7.549, yada, yada, yada. Now, now that I have my number written down, now we can round our answer to the nearest tenth. Let me clean up a little bit down here so you can see what I'm doing. Whoa. Eraser. Okay. Clean up. So there's the number sitting in my calculator right now. 7.549 five, four, nine, yada, yada, yada. And I want to round it to the nearest tenth. Well, hopefully you guys know that the tenth is the place after the decimal. Um, the first decimal place is the tenths. So that's where I want my number to cut off. So careful when you're rounding, you don't actually consider the number in the tenths place. You consider the number in the next place, the one you're about to throw away. And you ask yourself, am I halfway through our digit system yet? Well, our digit system starts at zero and it goes up to nine. And so halfway would be getting to five. So in my five or higher. So this number that I have here after the tenths place, the four, is not five or higher. And so it's not big enough to matter. So it'll just drop without making a difference. And I say my answer is about 7.5. Now, for those of you students who are advanced and you know there's also a second answer to this problem, a negative answer, I congratulate you. Yay, I clap for you. But the great news is on the GED, this problem is almost always in the context of algebra, measurement, I mean algebra, I'm sorry, geometry measurements. So like I'm measuring the side of a triangle or I'm measuring something. I would never have a negative measurement. And so it just doesn't come up on the GED. So it's enough to know this one positive answer, good for us. And so yay, we are done. The um, M is about 7.5. Great, if you have any uh, questions or comments about this, um, please uh, don't hesitate to drop them in the comments. I want to clear up your questions.